Ships are safe in harbor, but that's not what ships are for. But that is exactly what harbors are for. The same holds true for oil rigs, apparently. Though safe in harbor, specifically here in Scotland's Cromarty Firth, that isn't what oil rigs are for. With the amount of rigs located here, you might think that Cromarty Firth has one of the largest oil deposits in the world. But the reality is that the bay is just a form of a parking lot for the oil and gas infrastructure that has been drilling in the North Sea for decades. When oil prices are high, the incentive to build oil drilling structures is also high, and that results in a lot of oil drilling. A lot of oil drilling results in a lot of oil, maybe even a glut which results in lower prices, and therefore, less drilling. It's a dance that can whip back and forth over the course of months or years, and the result is a lot of money spent on a lot of oil rigs with potentially not a lot of drilling to do. So what does an oil exploration and drilling company do? Do they dismantle the rigs and sell them for scrap? Do they leave them out in the exposed North Sea and hope prices go up again, all the while keeping a crew on board to maintain and service the machinery? Or, they could do what many elect to do, and tow their massive investment into the shelter of this bay and wait out the low prices. Economically, that's usually the best decision. During periods of low prices, shipping companies may even park oil tanker ships off the coast of ports and simply wait for prices to go up, knowing that their patients will eventually be rewarded. The same is true for drilling. The result was a need for a place to stash oil rigs temporarily. With that, the Cromarty Firth Port Authority, the CFPA, was established. A dry dock for repairs was constructed in 1972, and since then, the Firth has been the temporary way station for dozens of rigs coming in for storage, repair, or fabrication, or going back out to do their proverbial duty. The North Sea is one of the most actively drilled areas in the world. Five different countries have access to the area, and at any given time there are hundreds of oil rigs, drilling into the ocean floor. That ocean floor is only on average about 300 feet down, which is very convenient for sea drilling. And that's due to the fact that up until fairly recently, a majority of the North Sea wasn't actually sea. Around 18,000 years ago, during the last major ice age, the entire area, known as Doggerland, was exposed earth that connected the British Isles to continental Europe. With the melting of the glaciers and ice caps, the lowlands filled with seawater. But below the surface of what used to be Doggerland sits oil reserves that were developed between 30 and 400 million years ago. Oil drilling in Britain dates back to the 1850s, usually when oil was found by chance, mostly in the Midland Valley, north of Glasgow and Edinburgh. It wasn't until the 1960s that technology allowed for the exploration, reserve estimation, and follow-on drilling to be worthwhile in the North Sea. The skyrocketing price of oil in the 1970s led to a bit of a gold rush for the area. But declining and fluctuating prices since then have resulted in varying levels of construction of new structures, and therefore production, like most recently in 2008 and 2014. Most of the oil rigs stowed here are shut down, weatherized and shuttered in order to allow for the least amount of effort to get them back to working order. Others retain a hot stack status, where a smaller skeleton crew is employed in order to run the machinery and keep the structure alive in a sense, so that at the shortest direction, they can be towed back out into the North Sea and up and running, drilling for oil and natural gas at a moment's notice, capitalizing on a swing up in prices. Of course, like any metal structure exposed to the sea, some rigs do end up scrapped, having spent decades at service of the industry, and that also happens nearby. And the reality is that the Cromarty Firth may be seeing a lot more oil rigs in the future. The total reserves already extracted from the North Sea's total is somewhere between 60 and 80 percent, meaning the wells are literally going to dry up within the next generation or so, estimates say around 30 years. The expansive fields that were depleted in the 1970s have been replaced by smaller areas, producing less and requiring more effort to work. In fact, the Office of Energy's UK has stated that as many as 1,600 wells could be decommissioned over the next 10 years, with a resulting production decline of 75%. That reduced production already reverted the UK from a net exporter to a net importer of oil in the early 2000s, their production being the largest decrease of any exporting nation at that particular time. Cromarty Firth's naturally calm bay and ease of access to the open sea 
have allowed it to develop into a hub of the oil and gas industry for Scotland and the rest of Britain. All around are remnants of the industry. The ancient down oil tanks quietly rust in the center of the town of Invergordon, near where rigs are decommissioned or retrofitted. Oil and gas companies are interspersed among the ruins of medieval castles. And now, as oil fields are being depleted, wind farm production is growing here as well, potentially developing as a future replacement to the North Sea drilling. Some locals complain about the rigs, calling them an eyesore and off-putting, claiming they detract from the natural beauty of the Firth and could push tourists away. This is obviously understandable, but in Scotland, a place that has an abundance of beautiful landscapes, the oil rig graveyard may be what makes this place uniquely interesting. And in 30 years, when all the rigs are gone, who knows, we may end up missing them. Or not. I don't know. Check out another video here. Thanks for watching. Thanks to my Patreon subscribers for helping me get here. As always, until next time, get lost.